This year at Virtual Ash 2020, we presented uh, an update on our data on odronextamab. Um, last year, we had presented the completion of our dose escalation study. So really, the major updates this year were longer follow-up um, on our patients uh, and some uh, additional patients as well. Uh, just to review a little bit about the drug, um, odronextamab is a bispecific antibody. It binds to CD20 on B cells, uh, normal B cells, uh, as well as uh, the malignant lymphoma cells, and it binds to CD3, the T cell receptor, uh, activating uh, the T cell to um, uh, then uh, kill um, the targeted um, lymphoma cell. The drug is administered um, in a split dosing schedule, uh, as well as a step-up schedule and with steroid pre-medications. All of these techniques um, are uh, incorporated to reduce our risk of cytokine release syndrome uh, and early toxicity. And I'll just walk you through it. Um, typically on uh, day one um, or in our first week, um, we will split the um, target dose for that week uh, over two consecutive days, day one and day two. And at each dosing, the patient will get steroid pre-medication. Then the second week, there would be an intermediate dose, so a step-up dosing from the first week, again split over two days, uh, again with steroid pre-medication. Finally, by the third week, we would give the full target dose for the patient, um, and that would be over a single uh, day's infusion with pre-medication involved that is well tolerated. Uh, all subsequent dosing would be done uh, at the target dose uh, in a single day um, and um, would be done in the clinic as an outpatient. These first three steps uh, out of an abundance of caution were done with patients hospitalized for the treatment days. Um, and of course, if they tolerate it well, everything thereafter would be as an outpatient. Um, we did present uh, our updated data on safety, and you'll see me just looking to the slide to give you, um, uh, you know, sort of the accurate data. Uh, and um, what we saw um, was that in large cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma, we did not have any uh, grade four cytokine release. And our grade three cytokine release was limited, 5% um, uh, of cases in uh, large cell, 2.5%, uh, a single patient in follicular lymphoma. And uh, all of those events um, were in this early step up. So by the time the uh, patients were on full dose, um, they were tolerating the drug uh, quite well. And we did not have anyone have to stop treatment or come off study um, because of the cytokine uh, release syndrome. Uh, and then when we look at activity, um, we saw um, you know, very robust activity in follicular lymphoma. So uh, at doses above five milligrams, and our study um, started very low doses. The, first, um, uh, the very first dose was 30 micrograms. Um, in our original cohort. So, uh, you know, we went up quite a bit. Um, but with follicular lymphoma at five milligrams, uh, all the way up to our final dose of 320 milligrams, we did not reach any dose limiting toxicity. And so we just stopped at the planned uh, maximum dose for the study. Uh, we saw a 90% overall response rate in follicular lymphoma, 70% uh, complete remission rate. So that was quite good. Uh, and 81% uh, sustained response rate. Um, or durable response rate, I guess would be the more appropriate term. Uh, and that was me um, measured by having two consecutive um, scans showing that the response was maintained. And our scans were um, 12 weeks or, or uh, three months apart. So we had 81% of those follicular lymphoma patients with a durable um, response. And our longest remissions uh, in those patients have gone out um, to 41 months uh, with a sustained response. Um, so a very positive data in um, follicular lymphoma uh, showing a durable response. Uh, and then we had dis, uh, divide, divided our diffuse large B cell lymphoma patients into two groups. Um, and uh, those were patients who had uh, not received prior CAR T therapy before the bispecific immunotherapy and those who had received prior CAR T therapy. So if we look at the patients first who had not received prior CAR T therapy, at our active doses in large cell lymphoma, which is 80, 80, 80 milligrams uh, and above, we saw a overall remission rate of um, 55%, and all of those were complete remissions. Um, and just to give you an idea of numbers, that was um, six patients out of 11. 
Uh, and 83% uh, of those remissions were durable, again, over three months. So on two consecutive scans, um, spaced 12 weeks apart. And, uh, and there are ongoing remissions um, as well. Uh, and with the longer follow-up, the longest ongoing remission is out to 21 months. Um, so active and durable there. And then finally, um, the last group that we mentioned in the talk was diffuse large B cell lymphoma following CAR T therapy. And there we had an overall uh, response rate of 33%. And to give you the specific numbers, that was eight patients out of 24. And 21% uh, or five out of 24 were complete remissions. 100% um, of those complete remissions um, were um, durable. They're ongoing. Uh, uh, and the longest one uh, out to 20 months at the time of data cutoff. So um, our study shows that odronexumab uh, with longer follow-up remains uh, a safe drug. Really, a lot of our um, toxicities that we saw were all early during the step-up dosing. So once patients got to um, a stable final dose uh, that was then continued, um, there was very little new toxicity uh, at that point. Um, and the patients who achieved responses uh, had durable responses. So I think those were the main take-home um, points of this update.